Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is Muhammad Khalid Ansari from HR Consultant Private Limited. We are the overseas education advisor providing services for the last 27 years. Today, we are conducting live session with Illinois Institute of Tech under the Camry Education Overseas. The Illinois Institute of Tech, one of the leading institute of the USA. With me, there is Mr. Samir Parekh. He is the region manager of Camry Education Group. He will brief about the available degree program for the undergraduate and postgraduate and the entry requirement, upcoming intakes, and finally, the scholarships. Now, over to you, Mr. Samir Parikh. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, yes, as mentioned by Khalid, I will be um, providing you a short presentation on um, on campus and our partnership with Illinois Institute of Technology. So I will just share my screen now where we will provide you the presentation. So on the agenda today, we will go through um, what is and where is Illinois Institute of Technology, which is in Chicago. I will also go through some stats and facts regarding IIT, um, our ac academics requirements for IIT as well, the option for the Elevate, um, the undergraduate admissions, the graduate admissions, and then the opportunity to do a pathway through on campus and Cambridge Education Group, as well as just a little bit about the life after technology, um, after the IIT as well. So IIT and Chicago, um, IIT is based, is a campus-based university, which is around about 10 minutes away from downtown Chicago. So providing our students the best of both worlds of having a campus lifestyle, along with being not too far away from the city lifestyle as well. So you will be based at a safe and safe campus within IIT, which is in the Mies campus, as well as then the opportunity to be close and getting around where everywhere the lifestyle of Chicago, the restaurants, the shopping areas, the sports facilities, everything in and around Chicago, which is very, very buzzing city. We are also part of the Kaplan Family Institute for Innovation and Technology Entrepreneurship. So IIT, is a hub for technology focused and indisciplinary thinking on campus. And we have the fantastic Kaplan Institute, which is the home for interprofessional projects, the IBRO program, the Entrepreneurship Academy, and it has the Institute of Design. In terms of the numbers and the rankings, I would suggest that obviously one of the best and the best option for IIT is the fact that we are fifth in the nation for finance. The overall ranking of the university, which is at 117 in the nation, so top 150 university, it has a fantastic, it is number one in the Chicago region for occupational earning power, number one in the nation for equality of opportunities, number one in Illinois um, for 10-year mid-career earnings. What that means is the amount of money and the return on investment that you will make if you study IIT will put you in the top 10 when it comes to earning and having a job in Chicago or in the US or in the world. It is a top 25 STEM college. It is also number 38 in the campus ethnic diversity. So in terms of the number of different college countries based at the university where students are coming to study and also it is an educational best for value as well. Our colleges, we actually have 40 undergraduate majors and over 50 minors. We have 190 different degree options and we also have the accelerated master's program for bachelor's and master's in five years. One of the most popular options at IIT is the engineering department. The fact that we have such vast different types of programs within the engineering, everything from aerospace engineering to biomedical engineering to electrical and computing engineering as well. 
engineering, I would say, would be one of the most popular schools within IAT. Also, IAT is very, very well known for its architecture program. So students can get their bachelor's within five years for the professional bachelor's degree. We also have the master's option in architecture as well. So you have the master's of science in architecture, master's of architecture, and the master's of landscape architecture as well. The master of architecture is an AAB, NAAB accredited program as well. Science, again, like the engineering, it is a very, very popular area. So we have 15 different areas of study within sciences. So again, we have everything from astrophysics to physics to medicinal chemistry. We also have the human sciences area as well. Again, nine areas of study, so applied and analytics, digital humanities is available, humanities and science, technology and society. We also are covering the College of Computing. And then as always, very, very popular area, which is in business. So again, everything from psychology to software engineering, to entrepreneurship, to environmental management. And this is for business in bachelors and in graduate programs as well. We do offer the opportunity for the Elevate. The Elevate means that students have the opportunity to study abroad. The internships are available. There's also the opportunity to do research and short courses. Just to give you an idea of our undergraduate program, we have around about 3,000 students. The student faculty is 12 to 1. So that's 86% of the classes have fewer than 40 students. The female students is 31%. Countries represented is over 130. The international student rate is 20%. And what really here matters is the retention rate, which is 86%. What that means is that if a student has done an undergraduate program, there's a high chance that they will come back to IIT to do their masters. And for those master's students, there's a high chance they will come back to do their PhDs. The hallmark of IIT is the education. So introduction to the professional, so first semester, exposure to research and careers. Then we also have the IBRO opportunity, which is a collaborative curriculum, real life projects. And also we have, as I mentioned, the Elevate, which does include the $5,000 scholarship. Yeah. Campus lifestyle, we actually have, um, it's very, very much like you would expect within the universities in the US. It's the opportunities to have uh, join the fraternities and sorority life, the opportunities to join the, and have your um, sports and so football, frisbee and hockey and outdoor soccer, so football again. And then again, as always, you'd get the fitness classes, um, bowling alley, and then the esports and digital arts center as well. So if you were looking to join IAT at direct level, what we would need is the SATs and ACT scores of one, to 1,400. And there is a maths placement exam. However, for this year only, their SATs and ACT scores will not be required. They are, for the, due to the pandemic situation, we are waiving the requirement for the SATs and the ACT scores. We will also need the high school transcript, a personal statement, and we will need one teacher recommendation letter. TOEFL requirement is 90 plus, IELTS requirement is 6.5. And we can also accept the Duolingo or password test, which can be done online. For architecture students only, a portfolio is optional. There is the recommended coursework, so English, four years, mathematics, again, four years, engineering, four years, and social sciences, two years. What we need if the students were transferring would be the all college transcripts, one teacher counselor recommendation letter, a personal statement, and again, the TOEFL and IELTS and portfolio requirement as well for architecture students as well. For our graduate students, this is where we do get a large number of our students. So we actually have 4,500 students in our graduate programs. Over a hundred countries are represented and there is a 95% full-time instructional faculty with a PhD or terminal degree. 
We have 60 plus masters and 25 plus PhD programs and 50 plus certificate programs as well. For master students, the program is required for two years and for professional master's degrees, uh, coursework only and the thesis is not required. If you are looking to do a PhD, um, typical requirements is four to six years of study or two to four years beyond masters. Um, I'm not sure how well you can see the screen, but as you can see, the number, the list of programs we do have is a very, very large amount. So you have everything from computer sciences to chemistry to health sciences. Um, so we do have pretty much anything that you probably will be looking at for master's programs. For our master's students, we will require a GPA of 3.0 and a TOEFL of 90 plus or an IELTS of 6.5 or a Duolingo of 1110 plus. GRE and GMAT is usually required, but again, like our SAT requirement, we are waiving that away for the direct entry for this year only. It will resume again from 2021, but for this year only, GRE and GMAT is not required. And if you are looking to join our business school, we will need a resume. However, if you were thinking that those scores were too high for you, or you felt like, I'm not sure I can join those programs, then we do have the other opportunity, which is with on campus, and that is our IFY and our IGY programs. What that means is you will still study the same number of years, but you will not, we can accept you at a lower level program. So for example, our international freshman year, that is a 2.25 requirement GPA. And our TOEFL is a 65, whereas the university is asking for a 90. And SATs are never required. So whether it's this year or next year, we do not require an SATs for our international freshman year. So essentially students have a lower entry requirement and SATs are not required. The course fees and the number of years of study would be exactly the same. Okay, Mr. And I, have, I have a quick question. Sure. Adding the entry requirement. So it is mentioned over here, the 2.25 CGPA for mm -hmm. the pathway. So what is the actual intermediate student in the Pakistani year 12 student entry requirement? Please ex uh, explain the inter uh, according to intermediate students entry requirement point of view. So if a student is doing HSC, you mean? Yeah, HSC, Pakistani students. So for a student who's, who's at HSC level, we can accept them at 60% or above. So 60% okay, 60 or above in the HSC, we can accept them onto our program at IIT. Okay, fine. So that is yeah equivalent to a 2 IB and OA levels of students? So if a student is doing O levels um, or GCSEs, um, yeah. we can accept them with five C's and above. Five C's and above. Okay, and yeah. a, what, a level? A level students is two E's and above. Two E's. E's. Okay, yeah. fine. So as long as they have two E's and above, we can accept them. If they're five mm -hmm. C's and above, we can accept them. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, sorry. So just to give you an idea. So when we are saying obviously for TOEFL, which is a 65, however, um, please remember that we can accept, um, so Pakistan um, is, is down as one of our English speaking teaching countries as well. So if a student has a 50% or above in the English at HSC level or C or above in the O levels, or, then we can accept that and there is no requirement for a TOEFL, IELTS or any other testing. Um, okay. We do have a number of different internal tests that we can accept. So for example, if you had a student that you sent to me and they got below 50% in the English, um, we can offer the opportunity to do an internal test. So we actually have a number of different tests. So for example, we have the Pearson Person test. We also run the Duolingo test. We run the, um, we also do the um, password test. These are okay. all available through on campus and they can be done online through you. So yeah. students can come to HR, sit in the office, or we can arrange like we are right now, a Zoom call and we can do that as well. Fine. And what about if, student, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt you, Samir. Okay. If a student has 70% mass in HSC in English, so can, mm -hmm. Waive his IELTS score requirement? 
Correct. If they go fifty percent or above in the HSC in English, hmm. we can waive the English requirements off. Seventy percent. Seventy by sixty percent. Fifty percent. Fifty percent above. Fifty five zero. Five zero fine. Um, just to give you an idea, the, the difference between the two is, as you can see here, we have the international freshman year where we're accepting a 2.25, um, whereas the university is asking for a GPA of 3.0. Um, we also, as you can see from the student's journey, they will still study the same number of years. Um, they will still get a number of 24 credits by doing our freshman year, and then they can move on to the second year. Um, and complete the program within the four years. And it's exactly the same if they were going a direct entry. Um, however, the number of credits they do get is a little bit more. They can earn up to 30 credits where our students can earn up to 24 credits. Um, the example of what an international freshman year is, is very much the same as they, what they were studying in their first year with the university. So it'll be a module in maths, computing, elective modules and seminar modules. What you will notice is we include here the um, English course classes. That is pretty much the extra requirements that they would, extra support that they would get from doing the freshman year. So students will get those extra classes, um, they'll get the extra support, they'll get a personal tutor whilst studying with us at the freshman year level, um, which gives them a higher chance of progressing onto the second year of their university program. And what you will notice in the second slide here is the pricing. Pricing does not change, even though we are providing extra classes and extra support. The 47480 is exactly the same course fees as it is if the student was studying in their first year directly as well. The housing and dining is exactly the same as they would, would be if they were a direct student, because this is all on campus. This is on the campus of the university. Um, and we are just, all we're doing is providing our students the extra help to ensure that they get the highest degree that they can get. Okay. Now, the 47480 might look a little bit scary, but there are scholarships available. So for all our students in Pakistan, we are providing a 22K scholarship per year at an undergraduate level. So every year the students can accept the 22K scholarship. So what they do is they bring that 47480 down to around about 25K um, per year that they'll be charged. So it's a fantastic scholarship to be providing. It's essentially close to being a 50% scholarship we're offering to our students in Pakistan. Um, and students, all students' requirements are is that they are accepted onto the program. We are not asking for any extra work for our students to earn that 22K scholarship as long as they meet the entry requirements, whether that's direct or whether it's for the freshman year, they would be offered the 22K scholarship. Okay. For our international graduate year, which is again the pathway option for our students, um, what we are doing here is we're asking for a 2.5 GPA at their degree level, whereas the university are asking for a 3.0. The TOEFL requirement is a little bit higher, so it's a 70 TOEFL and a 19 TOEFL. But again, with the English requirement, it's exactly the same as our undergraduate students. If a student is holding a 50% or above at HSC level, the English requirement will be waived. And every year, the GRE and GMAT is not required. Whereas the university at the moment, yes, we are asking for direct entry students to, we are saying no GRE or GMAT, but Next year, probably that will come back into play. For the international graduate year, which is a pathway through on campus, the GRE and GMAT is not required at all. The difference between the two, as you can see again, there is no extra years required. We're not asking for an extra year of studying to then extra year of costs. We are saying to our students that we are able to accept you at a lower level and you can get your master's within two years. What we will provide you is that English support to ensure that when you do progress and get your master's that you will get the best master's degree you can. Um, the options for our graduate year students is a little bit smaller than our undergraduate students. With our undergraduate students, we pretty much provide all options that the university provide at direct level. With the international graduate year, we do have a smaller number of courses, but we, are, we have picked the more popular places. So we've got the engineering department courses, we've got our college of sciences, 
We've got the Stuart School of Business, um, and then we also have the applied technology available as well. Housing and dining and tuition fees. So tuition fees for our international graduate year students is at 28K. Again, I, this may look a little bit scary, but however, we are offering an 8K scholarship for our students. So an 8K scholarship is offered to our students. Um, as long as they meet entry requirements, they are able to achieve the $8,000 scholarship. $8,000 scholarship is for the first year only. Okay. So the $8,000 will deduct on the, uh, in first year? In tuition. first year. Yes. Okay. So, what so basically the, tuition, the, tu uh, the whole tuition fee of this program? Yeah, so the tuition fees is, so it's 28K per year. So yeah. 28K for the year. And then, so you get the 8K discounted for the first year and it'll be 28, 28K for the second year. 23.50, fine. Okay, okay. thank you. Um, so what I want to kind of highlight as well is the benefits of the first and first and graduate year options. So of course we are offering the teaching from the university, essentially first yeah. of all. So the teachers and staff will be the university teachers and staff. Also, students will get a personal tutor to help guide them through their courses. They will also be part of the university from day one. So in terms of access to the facilities, the clubs, the societies, they get everything that they would if they were going directly to the university anyway. They also get the help to settle into life in Chicago. So they get a little bit more time and you're adjusting. You've moved from Pakistan and then you're coming to the US. You're not quite used to it. Um, I feel that this would be really, really essential, supportive for our students coming into the first year. And also they will be able to obviously improve their English. They'll get a new culture lifestyle and they'll be making over up to over 20% of the students at IIT who are international students as well. There is research opportunities as well for students if they were going to go directly. So they can join the Institute of Food and Technology. They can join the Argonne Laboratory and they can also join our Biomedical Science and Engineering um, Institute as well. Um, we do have some really good stories. So we have this student here who's a Biomedical Engineering student. Um, she said that she, IIT played a critical in her in the development as an engineer and researcher. She's, I, she's truly grateful to her professors and provided a career advice and allowed to participate in research projects since she was a freshman student. Also, there is the OPT opportunities as well, where students do get their, um, have, we've got a fantastic stat here, which is 96% 96, 96 of our students secured a job within six months of studying with us at IIT. And as you can see some, from some of the companies there's Facebook, there's Google, there's Visa, there's eBay, Amazon, very, very high um, companies here who are giving jobs to our students. We have also this student here, Rohit Prasad. He is an MS Electrical Engineering student, um, Vice President and Head of Scientist at Amazon now. He studied at IIT. He was fortunate to have, a, he says, I was fortunate to have a great graduate school advisor who trained me up for industry and what was going to be my passion. So again, a really great story. And the fact that he's now the president and, and head of sciences at Amazon working with Alexa. We have this student here, Udkash Khanna, um, MAS Data Sciences, software developer now at Google. We have this student here, Bazit Husa Kadami, MS Civil Engineering, PhD student as well, now uh, working at Bridgewick Rating Engineer at CN Railways. Again, these are very top companies these students are working at. And that is it really. So do, um, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you have, Mohammed, um, regarding IAT and what we can provide your students. Thank you very much, uh, Samir, for briefing the, all the entry requirement. Mm -hmm. And about the university undergraduate pathway program and for the direct entry and with pathway program. So actually my question is, you know, the, what is the life after the, you know, the pandemic situation in, in USA? Please explain because USA, you know, the peak uh, time in the coronavirus in USA. So mm -hmm. the students were wanting most of time to what would be the after pandemic situation 
in USA if a student going to study in US? Please explain. So are you asking whether, what would be the opportunities for students or what is the lifestyle like right now? Um, yeah. I mean, with IIT, we are actually doing a lot of different things. We are actually yeah. supporting our students in different ways. Um, one of the things that obviously has been developed at IIT right now, mm -hmm. I think there's a couple of things really. There's the opportunity to study online. So what we are doing at IIT is we're saying to our students, look, if you want to, if, if you're a little bit worried and you're unsure what you want to do, you can join our online course in September, or end of August, September, and mm -hmm. then you can come to a, the university in January. That is one option. However, okay. we at IIT are still preparing for face-to-face -face teaching, but we right. have got the online option for our students if they just would prefer to defer the, well, not defer the studies, but prefer for this year to be over and then join in January. They can still carry us, start the studies this year and they can continue the studies on in face-to-face -face in January if they wanted to. The other option we are also providing our students now is we are saying to our students, if you just want to do a couple of modules and you want to get a taste of what you want to do at IIT, we do have that option as well, which again is saving cost. So um, you don't have to do the full program. You can choose a couple of modules do that for September and then continue your studies in January full, full time. So okay. we are trying to be innovative and support our students because again, we understand the cost situation could be an element. The yes. opportunity to travel to the US could also be a problem. Um, we also understand that embassies at the moment are um, different in terms of timescales or when they're opening and allowing students to apply for their visas. So we are doing a lot of different things at the moment. Um, also on campus, we are, like I said, we are preparing. So um, in terms of the pandemic situation, the university and the campus are already putting things in place to ensure social distancing is already in place for our students when they do arrive in August. So for example, we have got a one-way system at the moment on campus where students have to work or walk a one-way system to make, ensure the social distancing is offered to um, students. Our accommodation, we're ensuring that students don't have to share their kitchen or the bathrooms, um, again, to ensure the social distancing aspect and making sure the safety of our students is number one. Um, but what I would say is that the US in general is doing everything they can to provide the students um, the safety if they were to arrive in the, or in the fall intake study. Okay. Yeah. So, Thank you very much, Samir, mm -hmm. for this. and our viewers. You have very nicely summarized anti-requirement program availability. So I would like to encourage the viewers to apply now and contact me on the, my number shown in the screen, shown as a screen, 03464747027. My name is Muhammad Khalid Ansari, and my email address, khalid at the rate hrpakistan.com. So, Final comments from uh, my Parikh from you. Sure, just a couple of things, obviously. So as I mentioned before, that we do have obviously the 22K scholarships available for all our students mm. for our undergraduate programs. We do have the 8K scholarships for our graduate students. But what I haven't actually mentioned, just a couple of things, is that if a student was to arrive and um, provide their acceptance of the course, in order to get your I-20, we do require a minimum deposit of $300. So if you were to pay a $300 fee, um, your admissions requirements were met and your bank statement was approved, we, all we require is a $300 deposit fee and then we will be able to issue you your I-20 as well. We have okay. two intakes. We have obviously the fall intake, which starts on August the 24th and our next intake will be in January. So is there so, any deadline for applying the admission closing, the deadline closing? So for application deadlines and um, for our I I20 deadlines it is Jan July um, the 10th. So we would need everything in terms of documents and ready to issue your I20 by July the 10th to arrive for August 24 start date. However, our last enrollment date for our August students, fall intake students will be the 31st of August. Um, okay. But as I mentioned, we do have the online option if students were not able to get their visa on time, we would be able to put them onto the um, 
online program. Or if a student wanted to defer their programs to January, we can do that, or we can provide a refund as well. Right. So there is no um, worry about students' fees because we have got our um, refund policy in place, allowing students to get their refund if they decided that they didn't want to come and do a study online. That is no problem. So right now, the best thing to do, obviously, is secure a place for three hundred minimum of three hundred dollars to study at a top ranking university. And if things don't change, then there's not nothing to worry about your fees because we will refund you your money. Okay, one more question. Sure. As you know, all institutions, universities are closed due to you know the COVID situation. Mm -hmm. So they cannot provide the recommendation letter. So can you? Uh, your team, admission team, can ex uh, accept the application without a competition letter. If you're looking for um, direct entry um, and you need a, we need a recommendation letter, what we have done in the past is we've actually emailed the lecturers directly ourselves. So if you provide the lecturer details to us, our yeah. admissions team will go and contact the lecturer, and then the lecturer can then return, um, respond back to us. So there's no issues about requiring to go and getting a letter from a university or anything like that. Um, okay. For the undergraduate year, freshman year program, we don't require a recommendation letter. So there is no nothing to worry about there because we there are okay. no requirements as well. Thank you, Samir. Thank you so much. We are providing all the things and we you have clear uh, given the options regarding the entry requirement and uh, UG and PG courses and availability and intakes. Now viewers, thank you very much. We are ending the session. So, Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you. Allah Hafiz. Thank you very much. Take care.